Hey guys, it's Ben Seong from Learn Australian Strength Performance, Learn ASP, and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we will be discussing about the forearms. Why are the forearms that important and should you really dedicate isolated training to your forearms? Now within the gym itself, most people tend to use wrist straps. Straps are very easy, they wrap around your wrist, there are different types of straps around that you can utilize to help grip or increase your grip strength. The problem with straps is that you often become over-reliant on those straps and in doing so, kind of lax or relax your forearm grip whenever you're holding a bar or you know, maybe even performing a pull-up or a chin-up, for example. The primary reason of why you need to strengthen your forearms is actually really to do with shoulder stability. Let me explain further through the concept of irradiation. Irradiation is, is basically this. Imagine me shaking someone's hand right now. If I'm shaking this, someone's, this person's hand and I am being soft about it, so my hands are quite loose, that means I'm not activating my forearms whatsoever, you can see that there is no flexion of my muscles up from my forearms or my biceps or my shoulders for that matter. The tighter I grip onto something, if I'm shaking someone's hand and I'm really holding on quite tightly, all of a sudden you can start to see my forearms flex, my biceps flex, and then this actually carries over into my shoulders where my shoulders now are becoming a lot more stiff in that sense and tight. This is the process of irradiation. That means the grip strength has irradiated from where I'm gripping it all the way into my shoulders. Now, if you're holding on to a bar, a dumbbell or a, a pull-up bar, a chin-up bar, and imagine you're using a wrist strap to kind of strap around it, which most people do, then the, the grip strength, your grip strength is not gonna be there. And because that's the case, and you become too reliant on that strap, you don't actually tense the muscles and there is no irradiation or effective irradiation effect from where your wrist is all the way to your shoulder. So as you can see, if there is not enough irradiation effect or strengthening of the forearms, I'm, and I'm relying too much on the straps, then my shoulders tend to be quite floppy in movement because I'm actually not contracting it as hard as I should. So your forearms really is the connector between holding anything heavy in the gym to shoulder stability. And if you strengthen your forearms, then most certainly you will also increase shoulder stability of your pressing and pulling movements. And that's why it's so important because it actually helps to stabilize your shoulders and minimizes any sort of shoulder uh, injuries that you might be getting because you're too reliant on straps. So today's YouTube video is specifically on exercises to develop those forearm muscles. Now I'm gonna give you three different exercises that you can use based on the biomechanics of the forearms, of, of the wrist itself to strengthen the forearms. These are simple exercises that you can do uh, pretty much with what you have at home and really help to carry over that strength into any sort of gripping movements that you're involved with in the gym. The first exercise here would utilize a dowel rod. Now watch me as I segment the dowel rod into equal parts. And this allows me to track where I'm actually placing my hand. I'm performing here a rotational movement. Uh, the camera is angled front on, so you can start to see that I don't really move my elbows too much. I just really want to rotate the rod with my wrist. All right, so this is a rotational movement of my wrist and I'm doing an internal rotation all the way here and externally rotating it as it goes the other direction. Now the second part of the movement here is an underhand rotation. So the first part was an overhand rotation. Now you see me complete the rest of the movement using an underhand grip. Again, holding the rod at the end or the edge because it makes it a lot more difficult as I swing and there is a lot more load that is exerted on my forearms as I start to rotate this and hold it as tight as I can. Now the movement is definitely not an easy one. Again, bearing in mind, the closer you move towards the middle, the easier the movement would be. The further you move out towards the edges, the more difficult the movement would be. So give this a go and challenge yourself. Now that you see me perform this exercise, I wanted to bring you a live example of how difficult this exercise actually is. It's not as easy as it seems. Sharon here is gonna be helping me out. And uh, just to give you an idea as well with regards to the dull rod, 
the closer you bring your hands to the middle of the rod, the easier the movement is gonna be because the load is quite even. You wanna make sure that in this particular movement, it is heavier where you are gonna be rotating it. So I'm gonna get Sharon to put her hand where the orange mark is, which is where I did it just now. Now she's gonna move it from an under hand position. So this is the maximum that she can actually lift it and actually hold it in an isometric position, right? You see hands are shaking. Now rotate it the other way. Okay, so she's stronger in, the, in this movement, which is an internal rotation. And now she goes out to an external rotation and she can only bring it there. So her external rotation, it is a lot weaker than her internal rotation. All right, let's try, try that one more time, if we can. So she brings it to a position where it's easier right now as she does that. Great, bring it all the way. So you can see that her range of movement has increased, which also tells me she's stronger. Even though she's shaking, she's stronger in this movement because there's less load on the dowel rod. Okay, so back again. Oh my God! Wow! And that's the maximum range of movement. And then up again. So you can see the disparity here of the forearms where you are a lot stronger in twisting it outwards, which is really your internal rotation. And when it comes to the external rotation, it's a lot weaker. Now this exercise here is an exercise that focuses on radial deviation. Basically, I'm just using a simple kettlebell. My arms are positioned on a stool or a bench and you watch my wrist as it hangs over. Now, this allows me to maintain that I can fully extend my wrist all the way down and flex it towards myself. So this movement is radial deviation. It works on the flexion and extension of the wrist in sort of the upward movement uh, and learning to control it down. Okay, so you can perform this uh, exercise bilaterally using a kettlebell as I've done and now we will look at the unilateral movement of performing this exercise. Now the kettlebell movement is a bilateral movement. You can of course perform this unilaterally or using one side at the time and I will perform this using a dowel rod. The second movement I'm performing is actually working on radial deviation of my wrist. Now I'm trying to keep my elbows as fixed as I can and holding the dowel rod at the edge so that this increases the load that I'm lifting in this particular exercise. So watch as I bring the dowel rod towards myself and I extend it as far as I can towards the floor without actually tapping the floor. This increases my range of movement and allows the load to drag the extension of my forearms down, which is again radial deviation focus. To complement the radial deviation movement that I've just performed, we are going to perform an ulnar deviation in this particular exercise. So watch me down here. Again, the goal is to keep my elbows fixed as I allow my wrists to extend and flex using the dowel rod holding at the edge. And this movement down here, which complements the initial radial deviation movement is specifically focused on ulnar deviation. All right, the radius and the ulna are two bones within the forearms that cross over as you flex and rotate your forearms. So very important to perform these two particular movements to help with the flexion and extension of your forearms. Now the last movement here, the third movement is circumduction of the wrist. So basically I am drawing circles with the dowel rod uh, in a clockwise end as you can see later in anti-clockwise manner. I'm holding the dowel rod all the way to the edge to ensure that there is a lot more load. And this allows me to navigate the dowel rod in circles, working my wrist in a clockwise and an anti-clockwise manner. So this is a, a really useful exercise. I've chosen to perform it standing up. Uh, and the goal here again is keeping my elbows fixed so I can really work my wrist. Now, if you decide to kneel down and, and position your forearms on a bench in order to stabilize it, uh, you can most definitely do so as well. But a, a really good exercise using a simple dowel rod to work the circumduction of your wrist. So just to summarize, for you guys, now grip strength is definitely something which is not focused on in the gym. Uh, we are lazy, we tend to use a lot of straps to help us lift. But if you can get your forearm strength stronger, then understand that there has a bigger carryover into presses, pulls, and the stability of your shoulder, as well as the weight you're gonna be lifting because this is often your limiting factor. The three exercises that we've gone through today focus on 
flexion, rotation to the side, and circumferential rotation as well. Now these exercises can be done really simply with the tools that I've used. I hope you can utilize these particular exercises to get your forearms stronger. Now by no means does this represent all the exercises uh, you can use to exhaust your forearms. Obviously there are a lot of specified exercises to do with grip where you can actually grip and squeeze. Uh, now, if you don't have this, then the exercises that I've shown you are a really cheap and easy sort of solution that you can use to get your forearms stronger. And I really hope that you've taken away from this. And if you like today's YouTube uh, episode, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, tell us what you like about it or how you have tried the exercises out. And also remember to hop on to learn hyphenasp.com, which is our online education site where you will get a lot more information on exercises like this, as well as, as on other topics such as nutrition and sports-specific training. And I look forward to seeing you in our next YouTube episode. Take care.